Chat, people want me to watch Pat's new video? Chat, you guys just want me to watch it now? We're on round one. Oh, there you go, okay, dude. Like the monster. Wild out, boys. Let's go. I like the zombies being us. It's like zombies are the blue collar monsters. Call of the Dead released March 17th of Classic. 2011 as the first zombie. It's almost 10 years old. Wow. Cast of playable characters it's over nine Michael years old. Hooker, Holy Sarah Michelle shit Geller, map pipes. Trejo, you can off yourself, dog. S tier map. Most this is literally, chat, the most casual map you can ever find. Let's just talk about it. Evolve, though, it's for incredible. The first time ever, this map is the map incredible. featured a boss antagonist who is none right. other than George Romero. The <clears throat> original Zombies movie director. R.I.P., dude. Night of the Living Dead, among Rest other peace, this guy, classics. Dude. Call of the Dead dropped monumentally, showing that Zombies true, was still true. not yet done. Growing. There was it no was teaser bold, about this. It just happened. Map. So I've noticed that Pat doesn't talk about Black Ops 4. This map is so iconic that it literally ended the Ether storyline. Don't even tell me it's a shit map. It's like literally the best layout ever. I'm coming out. after all of you in the motherfucking chat. But it's I'm coming after all of you. It has not been safe from criticism over the years. That's either. true. Call of the Dead has some real hey, George, hey, George, shut that! Match. Shut your ass! It does a lot right, but it's certainly not perfect. And today we're going to be analyzing this map to see- I disagree! Is, well, is okay. Call of the Dead an S-tier map like some claim, or are its many critiques justified? Today, we'll be figuring this that is good. Oh. I turned up so the So welcome back, guys, to Zombies Retrospective, a weekly series in which we do a deep dive of your old favorite Zombies maps. If you are new here, uh, please consider subscribing to help us reach 3 million subscribers. Pat's it's editor super is close, on another level. Call of the Dead is first and foremost unique. There was never a map like it before, and there really hasn't been a map quite like it since. Bigger than even Ascension, this map like weighs that. in at around 23 and a half Nocturne Totem. What the? Six stories of verticality. But what the fuck? But beyond size, there is a lot of content packed into this That's map. That's massive. Well. First of all, you have George, the constant, unyielding mid boss round who will accompany you through this map until the very end. The map also has icy water, which can slow you down and freeze you if you stay in it too long. There is added mobility, zip lines, and the so flinger. So much new came Dead from this. Dude. Not one <laughs> Deadshot <laughs> Daiquiri. Not one unique wonder weapons. <laughs> and also, not only does Call okay, of the Dead they, bring these new no things. No, I'm Deadshot. No, I'm Deadshot. It dead actually shot. removed a lot of things that fans had started to grow accustomed with to as permanents in the series. Call of the Dead has no traps, which seriously impedes high round attempts. True. There are no boss rounds or individual unique enemies. Every round's at all. a boss round. <laughs> the map doesn't even have monkey bombs for that matter. You've also got weird reversals like getting pack a punch is more simple than getting jug. Call of the Dead shook up the zombies formula. That's so true. I didn't actually think fresh. about it. Also, all the YouTube comments who are like, oh, Pat says something, Lex just says true. True. Note going into this that Call of the Dead is a challenging map. Like most Black Ops 1 maps, gameplay is at the forefront here, and the challenge is quite interesting. Its difficulty is different from other maps, and this is because it was the first time that the game developers managed to make something challenging while not simultaneously making it feel unfair. See, looking back, Noct was constrained, Verrucht was nonsensically fast, Jerice was glitchy, and Five was just downright cruel at times. What the fuck kind of- Is that motherfucking PhD in there? Who's fucking got this clip of Five? What the- But for the first time, we see a map that managed to challenge the player, yet strike a fair balance. Call the Dead is fair. That's why I love it's it. A it's a fair map. Example it's a fair map. map designed. It's a the fair map. is an incredibly fun wonder weapon, but it doesn't scream. PhDs on the map. A smart player can be dangerously effective with it, but if you get cornered, you will likely die. Also, it stops being a one-shot kill in the four. Pat only fire shots. Four high rounds, but fair to the casual player. Compare this to the Winter's Howl, which stops in the 20s, and you can see how well balanced this gun is. And yes. also, can I, can I just remind you how cool the upgraded version sounds? I'm nutting. There is one that's other true. wonder weapon, though, and that's <laughs> oh, the VR. Oh, no, no, no. Now, 95% of you probably agree with me on this when I say that the VR11 is 
absolute trash. But I do just want to take a moment to speak to the other 5% of you contrarians out there. I know the ideology here. Patrick, when you pack a punch the VR11, <laughs> it can give your teammates insta kill and it's good for George and high rounds and listen, stop. Please, for the love of God, stop. My hands this are is up. the scavenger. My hands, my hands are up. My hands are up. I'm stopping in the name of the law, dude. He's caught me left-handed. What can I and do? And this is the VR11. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Pow! He's out of there. He's out of the ring. Oh, it's incredible. Holy moly. Incredible gun. Incredible the scavenger gun. is big pee pee. The VR11 is poo poo. Moving on, it, even dude. the enemies in this map pose a unique challenge. Something I think a lot of people forget to realize <laughs> is this is the first zombies shit. map to feature a significant <laughs> amount of ground spawners, which can be incredibly dangerous. That Pretty much true. every map before this had zombies either spawning in water or from barriers. And with this new feature, you think you're fine, but you can die super easily. Especially All it takes the water, is one yeah. unlucky spawn below you. Can't see that also, shit. there are no boss rounds. Up until this point, boss rounds were historically short rounds, and without them in the map, true. it takes much longer to go <laughs> rounds. Later rounds really start to drag on, especially in four player, and on top of that, you're not even guaranteed a max ammo. And then, of course, lastly, you have George. Now, the primary function of George, it seems, was to discourage camping, and that okay. certainly achieves its goals. But George also adds an extra level of chaos and difficult to training, and that was something we had never seen before. George is kind of like the alpha version of Brutus hey, and the Panzerstreck and Marquas, those mid-round bosses that spawn in and make everything crazy for a little bit. But with George, the option of chaos is actually put on the player. It's not random. This is because George will only get angry if you accidentally shoot him. George Romero is the perfect boss in Call of Duty Zombies. He is the perfect boss in Call of Duty Zombies. Talk to me. Fight me about it. Chat. He gives you a wonder waff. Are you kidding me? No. You know, hey, dude. No, no. He's, no, he's not fair. And George provides a long-term challenge that really benefits later rounds. Looking back to Ascension, I found myself lacking desire to progress into the later rounds. But George adds content to keep the player going. Yes! Yes, dude! Like, he literally just said what I said! Dude. Apart from the few select areas that we often tend to remember, most of the map is pretty close for us. It's certainly chat. not Verrook level small, but a sort of right amount tight. Hallways it are is big and tight somehow. rather than one, meaning Don't know. you need to be careful, but it's not impossible to play the map safely. Walking through icy water can be dangerous, but you can also use these areas as effective shortcuts if need be. And of course, if a teammate is to go down, well, now you're in for a really big challenge That's the true. map is incredibly will, large and if yeah. you don't respond immediately it's very likely use the zip lines use the zip lines use phd ah dude oh, oh, it. oh so overall this is a very hard map with challenging aspects but this time the game finally provides you with a chance to succeed now shifting gears to atmosphere call of the What's dead is not a beautiful map but i think its setting it's really true. strikes a nice tone it's, it's ascension blue. felt devoid of color and while call of the dead does the same it feels ascension bo1 feels more appropriate here Maybe that's just the Canadian in me talking, but I feel like it gets away with a bad color scheme since it's setting Maybe forth. that's why I like it too, Chad. I'm Canadian. I don't know. There's something going on with what he just said here. First and foremost, the lighthouse makes an incredible centerpiece to the map and also serves a nice function to show the location. Yes, of the yes, The boats yes. are a little boring, but they at least provide a different area from snow and water. And Call of the Dead also <laughs> has fun little details. There really is nothing else to say about the boats they really they, they suck up the anchor chain near mule kick it's little things like you that, that, see that. Look at him. above and beyond when making this map another often that. missed detail is the contrast of the perk machines 
In the history of Call of Duty Zombies, I don't think there is a map that makes perk machines look as incredible as on Call of the Dead. You've got this bleak, dead, frozen wasteland, yet scattered around the map are these little pockets of hope. We've also got a great Easter egg. While Ascension's Easter egg was great at the time, looking back, it kind of feels like Weenie Hut Jr., where Call of the Dead steps it up, and this is an Easter egg that can references? still stand on its own. Day. It is quite simple with a world record solo run of only seven minutes that involves flipping switches and locating bottles of vodka, but class. They are interesting it's steps. Class. You're basically just assisting the main crew and getting the golden rod while they are stuck in a bunker. This dynamic makes for a really it's funny, funny situation with some incredible dialogue. Yes. Also, a submarine pops out of the water at one step, and on top of that, you get an amazing reward for beating it. The Wonder Waff returns. And this also makes it so that every time you kill George from now on, you get the Waff instead of the Death Machine. I mean, I would have preferred if we just got to keep the Wonder Weapon rather than it expire, but That's true. it still is a nice touch. Plus, this is the first Zombies map to actually feature four Wonder Weapons. And despite one sucking, one being the Ray Gun, and one not really being permanent, I guess, I guess there that's are still four kind Wonder of weapons. cool. Yeah, I guess, so, yeah. with all that said, on paper, Call of the Dead really sounds like a solid map. It's got good it gameplay, is. tons of new features, cool What do you mean it sounds solid like Solid wonder weapons and a fun Easter egg. It's got a lot of the ingredients to be an it extra sounds map. Like but despite all this, I just can't see how it would rival some of the more obvious greats. So I say this to everyone, but Lex especially. It's the guy back there, bro. It's the guy back there. No you're watching this and I know you love Call of the Dead. It's a strong map, but there is no way it deserves a spot up with the greats. Dude, you can't just say that. You can't just you can't just say that. There's no way you can just say that. You can't just say that. With 12 minutes in the video, you, you can't just say that, dude. You literally can't just say that, dude. You're about to make a grown man cry right here, dude. Grown man's about to cry on stream right now for his favorite Call of Duty Zombies <laughs> Oh, Pat, you better whip out the fucking Declaration of Independence on this one. Oh, we better whip S -tier out. tier is a top tier, Yo, above and beyond. And in That's order true. to make it there, you gotta be truly special. Bring an insane amount of innovation to the table. Be packed with new content. Have compelling storyline and do all this with few mistakes that detract from the experience. Wow, he just described Call of the Dead. <laughs> Call of the Dead is great, but it doesn't quite hit all of those keys. And so if it's not F's tier, then what is it? Yo, this full body. My biggest issues with Call of the shit. Dead share a very common theme that I see throughout all of Black Ops 1 zombies. For example, in our Kino retrospective, I highlighted my gripes with the weapon mechanics of the game and how most guns don't have enough ammo to be useful. But there are also little things related to each and every map. Five has a terrible wonder weapon, but it could have been fine if they just made it kill for longer. Ascension's monkeys are a nightmare to deal with in solo, but could have been easily fixed in Chronicles with the maybe. Moves. First of all, you know we gotta talk about the fog. As I went on and on okay. about how okay, okay this okay. map can look, Bring it I'm up. sure you Bring were all thinking up. about the fog. So yeah, 50% of the time, this map looks thematically appropriate for sure. But the other 50% of the time, well, it doesn't really look like anything at all. It's just great. See, the fog is actually a great- How he gonna say that? When Origins got the same thing too! Great idea that makes sense given the location. The problem with it, however, is that you can't make it go away. It just comes and goes as it pleases. Forever. There is nothing true. you can do about it. And you're just it comes and goes, to look at though. Gray for no reason. I the guess. fog is the biggest issue with the map. And the reason it bothers me so much is, again, how it was implemented. It's not the feature as a whole, but it's the way it was implemented. And like a lot of things with Call of the Dead, I... Chat, so I will tell you something that was told to me when I was at Treyarch that I think I can say. Apparently... Call of the Dead was one of the hardest maps for Treyarch to ever push out, ever. Like, it was, it was, 
like one of the maps that was so graphically intensive and it's the exact like call of the dead was kind of like transit 1.0 or like the first transit in a way where it's like they literally had to use the fog to patch up the way the map looked because there's no way they could have fit all that on xbox 360. see total grayness would actually work more effectively in those early rounds but i just think it would be so satisfying to have players turn on power and get like a 50 percent boost in visibility but not a full boost in visibility. I, as you know, I can agree with that. I can agree with that. And, no, see, if you want to go full visibility, why not make it so upon killing George for the first time, the map is bright for the rest of the game. This would only add to the satisfaction in beating him. That would be pretty and cool. actually give you control over the weather. Seeing nothing but gray time and time again. That's actually a really I interesting idea. I don't like idea. it, and it I takes away from an otherwise visually appealing map. I think giving players the control to permanently remove fog would have made the map significantly more enjoyable. But Call of the Dead also has some other serious flaws beyond visuals. The map is poorly laid out. Here we go, dude. I knew he was gonna whip it out. 1618, dude. 1618. I knew he was gonna whip it out. I I have to be honest, chat. I have to be honest. I fully object this statement. I fully object this statement. I think Call of the Dead's layout is perfect. I think it's literally perfect. Sure you have to sure you have to run around Ooh, run around yeah 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 you guys yeah you guys don't like running around and call the dead but you like running around on transit yeah on transit yeah the the map where you literally have to be usain motherfucking bolt to go anywhere okay dude dude chat we love you know what chat we love that for you bro love that call for the you. dead is not only massive but there are many one-way paths and because of this you're often tog fix this tog fix this forced to do a lot but i didn't walking. even think it was that big Sometimes of a problem you're staring at the place you want to go but there will be a gate in the way so you have to go all the way around to move what was only five feet while I appreciate the awareness, Pat, just don't fucking jump down. Just go off the other way, dude. <laughs> with the zip lines and flinger, down, there simply dude. aren't enough of them. And on top of that, they're not what? even really placed in great spots. Like the top of the lighthouse, for example. Yeah, it's a nice way to escape, but how often is that actually a practical way to use to get around the map? There's two things that you can do on the top of lighthouse when you go off. You can either take the zip line, right? You can either take the zip line, you can take the zip line, or you can get fucking PhD and jump off the goddamn tower. What do you mean, dude? It's the same thing. Oh my god, dude. What do you mean? I don't even... Dude, and they're literally in the best spots ever. You want to talk about bad fucking movement placement in a map? Look at Zetsubo no Shima. Who the fuck uses that sewer pipe? Or the zip line in Zetsubo? And even on that note, there's just some things that aren't placed in good locations. Take Jug, pump. for example. Now, it makes sense to have a non-necessary perk like, say, Mule Kick over there, but I just don't understand why they had to put Jug that far away. From spawn, it takes seven doors to open it, which is just really tedious, especially having to continually go back there. To because it's the best perk in the game! That's why, dude! Jug location is ass? Well, that's the point! Get it over and over. So the mobility additions do help the flow of Call of the Dead, but they are nowhere near enough to make up for what is otherwise a poorly laid out map. But of course, finally, this retrospective would not be complete without a George hate piece. Now, I will be open. I am in the dude. camp of people who like George, but I can understand but, why he... There's always got to be a but, huh, Pat? There's always got to be a but. There's always... You, you, I like George, but... Yeah, okay. ...isn't okay. unanimously a beloved boss. But instead of going on about his flaws, I think it will be better to look at how he could have been improved. So I think the biggest issue people have with George is that he never goes away. Round one, round 80, it doesn't matter. He's there. And yeah. even when you kill him, he's coming back the next round. This is That's why he's coming back, annoying, so. and this is why players hate him. They just need some time alone. So this leads me to thinking that maybe- <laughs> Just need some time alone. What is this, dude? What, is, what type of video is this? Just need some time alone. 
We just need some time alone. Okay, dude. Go, go have your time alone on Kino fucking Dentone. Get the fuck out of Call of the Dead, dog. Get the fuck out of Call of the Dead, bro. Call of the Dead would have benefited from George not having to spawn back once you beat him. Imagine if he was like the Ender Dragon from... I might have to leave this video. We're talking George Romero, how he's the Ender Dragon. Minecraft. Which, oh, by the way... Have you subscribed to the <laughs> of my No, own? that was only for his second That's channel. Not. It was all promotion. We got baited. Craft no. Link in the description. But flawless transition oh side. What I'm getting at is we got, whole, we got whole ass baited. All of the dead where George is exactly as he is until you kill him. In this remake, imagine that he doesn't come back. And if in this remake, I love how he has not said the words talk near Toten once. Boys, Black Ops 4 does not exist. Let's go, boys. If you wish it, he can be gone for the rest of your run. That would give players the space that they so desperately crave, but would also limit ambitious players from being able I, to I agree. Hurt. If you get so rid of him permanently, this it's cool, but like... He gives you a wonder waff. Like, that is the point of having him around. Like Ender that. Dragon idea, where let's say you can also go to a certain area of the map, do X, Y, and Z steps, and boom, this makes him respawn. I was just thinking about that. That actually makes sense. Maybe that's why Treyarch did the golden pack punch for Togdru Toten. Because, like, dude, that would be sick. Hold on, stay with me. You guys know that separate island on Togdru Toten? With a golden pack lunch, I remember you say, no, I didn't play with him. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Uh, if you had George go there after you killed him initially, and he would just go there, that would be fucking sick. That would be sick. I would like that idea. So this would allow players to continue to get reward perks if they choose to do I do so, like that idea. Also I don't that agree with the Ender Dragon, dude. What the really, hell is going on? I can't see dragon. how this hurts the map in any way, and I think it would honestly only serve to improve it. George can be exhausting, and the map loses a lot from oh, never providing the player with a true break from him. So, Call of the Dead is certainly far from perfect, as is it's not an S tier map. But even. What the fuck? Did you just say it's not an S tier map? Even with these changes made, I don't think it deserves that. It would certainly make it closer to being one, but I just don't think Call of the Dead has the innovation, storyline, or deep gameplay to put itself in that tier. I mean, really, how great are the characters on this map? Sure, as actors, they're super cool, it's and true. they were only on the map. They're, they're kind of whatever. Out, but they're kind I just of don't think these four have. I swear, to if he puts this shit in like F tier, other I'm about characters to lose we it. get to see. They aren't remembered like the one-off greats, such as JFK, Sal DeLuca, it's Al true. Arlington. It's because all three of the, all th or Jessica Rose. Okay, maybe not Jessica Rose, but all three of the other characters before that, they actually have iconic lines. I don't know about Jessica Rose. What the fuck she say that may anybody remember? It's got great replayability, and to me, it really feels like the first full map. You can go for eight. It's Turks, true. It feels Easter actually like a BL3 map, a fun time which is why they remastered it. With. My final rating for Call of the Dead is an 8.6 out of 10. Eight tier. Yo! Let's go, dude! Exactly where it belongs. If you believe... Oh, dude, it's true. It's true. Like, sure. I would put it in S because I think it's literally one of the best maps ever made.